Hello, I'm Margarita Fursova from Voredoc, Water Resources Research and Documentation Center of the University for Foreigners of Perugia, which is uh, one of the partners of the Charisma project. In uh, this lesson, I will cover UNESCO's International Conventions on Heritage Protection with a particular focus on one of the best known and most important, the World Heritage Convention. The overall aim of this lesson is to provide you with the basic information about UNESCO's conventions related to heritage protection, as well as the UNESCO's work and policies on the climate change driving threats to heritage. I will start by briefly describing UNESCO's mission and how it relates to the protection of cultural heritage. UNESCO's mission is uh, defined in uh, Article 1 of the Constitution of the Organization. It could be summarized as uh, the promotion and uh, contribution to the world peace and security through international cooperation in education, science and culture. Strictly connected with uh, UNESCO's mission, the protection of cultural heritage is one of the core functions of UNESCO. The organization works to maintain, increase and diffuse knowledge through the protection of cultural heritage and recommends its member states the necessary international conventions. In this slide, you can see the list of the UNESCO conventions related to cultural heritage. They cover different aspects, such as protection of cultural heritage in times of armed conflicts against illicit movement, as well as protection of different categories of heritage, world heritage, intangible heritage and underwater heritage. In some cases, as it uh, happened, for example, with the uh, UNIDRA Convention on Stolen or Illegally Exported Cultural Objects, UNESCO contributes to the development of international treaties adopted within the framework of other organizations. In this lesson, I would like to focus particularly on the UNESCO World Heritage Convention, which was adopted in 1972. The convention encourages the identification and protection of uh, heritage sites, consider it uh, to be of outstanding universal value to the whole humanity. As of August um, 2023, there are 195 member states to the convention. The convention regards both uh, cultural and natural heritage and in this way uh, links together the concepts of the protection of nature and the cultural properties. The notions of the world uh, natural and cultural heritage are defined in Article 1 and 2 respectively. In uh, 1972, the same UNESCO General Conference adopted also the recommendation about the protection of the cultural and uh, nature natural heritage on national level. The Convention sets out the duties of member states to identify potential World Heritage Sites located within their territory, protect them and transmit to future generations. Currently, there are 1,199 properties on the World Heritage List protected by the Convention. To enter the World Heritage List, a site must meet at least one of ten criteria of outstanding universal value defined in the Convention's operational guidelines. It must also have a management plan and meet the requirements of authenticity and integrity also outlined in the operational guidelines. Firstly adopted in 1978, the operational guidelines are updated regularly and the last review was in 2021. It's important uh, to note uh, that um, the inclusion of a site on the list uh, requires uh, the consent of the state uh, concerned. The inclusion uh, to the World Heritage List uh, means firstly greater protection for heritage sites. 
The convention requires, for example, uh, the its member states to report uh, periodically to the World Heritage Committee on the state of conservation of uh, their World Heritage sites. Uh, the inscription uh, on the World Heritage List uh, uh, means also the improved management, tourism and visibility, and uh, uh, funding opportunities. The Convention also foresees another specific list of the World Heritage in Danger that currently includes uh, 56 uh, World Heritage Sites. The purpose of the second list is to increase uh, awareness on the threats to the concerned World Heritage Sites and uh, encourage to adopt urgent actions for their protection. Inscribing a heritage site on the list of World Heritage in Danger allows to allocate funds for immediate assistance for the endangered property. Such financial aid may come from the World Heritage Fund that was established in 1977 under Article 15 of the Convention. This fund may also finance studies, research, training, equipment and experts needed to safeguard World Heritage Sites. There is also the World Heritage Committee, a specific uh, committee is established under the Convention. The committee is responsible for the overall implementation of the Convention. It uh, defines, for example, the properties to be inscribed on the World Heritage List, the purposes for which the World Heritage uh, Fund may be used, uh, and the reviews a report uh, uh, on the state of conservation of uh, the World Heritage Sites. In addition, there are three international organizations that are named in the World Heritage Convention as uh, advis advisory bodies to the World Heritage Committee. These are ICROM, ICOMOS and IUCN. The World Heritage uh, Committee is assisted by a secretariat. This function is currently assumed by the World Heritage Center, um, established in 1992. Among its uh, main functions, uh, the World Heritage Center provides assistance to state parties and disseminates information about the conven convention to the state parties, advisory bodies and general public, including uh, the World Heritage Sites uh, managers. In particular, in cooperation with the advisory bodies, the World Heritage Center uh, published uh, the World um, Heritage Resource Manual series consistent, uh, that consists of uh, five manuals, including one on disaster risk management for World Heritage. This uh, last manual includes information on managing uh, natural and human-made risk risks uh, including those um, uh, driven by climate change. In addition to the publication uh, listed on the previous slides, there are also several manuals and guidelines on risk management issues and methodology published by ICROM, which has uh, capacity building as one of its main activities. Uh, discussing uh, this topic, uh, it is also important to mention the work uh, within UNESCO on uh, the management and mitigation of climate risks uh, to heritage. The World uh, Heritage Convention, anticipating uh, later discussions on climate change and sustainability, considers uh, climate impacts uh, uh, on uh, World Heritage Sites. However, climate change was officially recognized as a threat to heritage by the World Heritage Committee in 2005. Uh, the work started on this issue led to the publication of a report on um, climate change and world heritage uh, with a strategy um, about uh, management responses and uh, uh, to another publication on uh, case studies. In uh, 2007, UNESCO adopted uh, the policy document on the impacts of climate change on World Heritage Sites. An updated version of this policy is expected to be adopted soon 
by the end of um, 2023. It is interesting to note that UNESCO recently not only highlights the increasing impacts of uh, climate change on heritage, but also calls for the recognition of World Heritage Sites as an asset and a resource for sustainable development. From this uh, perspective, it is important to introduce uh, the work of ECOMOS on the interlinkages between heritage and uh, climate change. Among the advisory bodies of the World Heritage Convention, ECOMOS is one of the most active uh, on the issue of climate change. Within ECOMOS, a specific working group on climate change and heritage was established in 2016. A few years later, in December 2020, the organization declared a climate emergency and called for urgent collective action to safeguard uh, heritage. One of ICOMO's uh, resolutions and uh, it, uh, its recent report entitled uh, The Future of Our Past, Engaging uh, Cultural Heritage in Climate Action, confirm uh, this uh, close relationship between climate change mitigation and adaptation and uh, cultural heritage. This report also encourages uh, cooperation of climate and heritage professionals. Here on uh, this last uh, slide, you can see a statement from the Future of Our Pasts report, which uh, highlights the potential role of um, the World Heritage Sites as uh, laboratories of ideas that um, can uh, set international standards for heritage management, particularly with regard to climate action. In fact, uh, there are already several examples of World Heritage Sites uh, play playing this role, as uh, demonstrated by UNESCO's Canopy program. The slide uh, provides a screenshot with a few examples, and more case studies can be found on the platform of the Canopy program. Thank you for your attention and see you in other videos of this course. Bye.